different athletes. I can't see it from there. We wanted to try and quantify like why they do well at certain aspects of cycling and why they shine at certain courses and not at others. And these are two of the most talented cyclists. Like they're going to go down in history books as some of the greatest American racers ever, and in different arenas. Um, so I think after tonight you'll understand a little bit of why they really excel at what they excel at. So. Um, Again, so Ryan, two-time national champion, four-time US GP champion as of last Sunday, current short track national champion, and was the previous cross-country national champion for mountain biking. Adam, uh, this last year won short track national championships, crushed Downeyville, cross-country and downhill, uh, went to the Olympics, as everybody knows, and has had tons of success in World Cup cross-country events. So. Get a little closer. Uh, these guys, all right, seven inch difference in height between the two of them, and Ryan's only got 12 pounds on him. Wolf, ridiculous and skinny. Um, and they even get lower than that in body fat percentages, so it's, they're pretty thin. Um, when, I, when we measured Ryan and Adam's femur lengths, like we just took it off their trochanter tail to the down to the joint line of their knee. Um, it's not a perfect measure, but that really, you, you see there's a huge discrepancy in how long Ryan's legs are. If you see him ride, it's obvious. It's historic. Uh, there's a 28% difference in leg length, and Adam doesn't have small legs. That's, that's a huge biomechanical difference between the two of them that we'll talk about later. Uh, tibia is the lower bone of the leg. Uh, what was that? Three and a half inches between the two of them. That's still another 20% that Ryan has on Adam's legs. If you see their bikes next to each other, you can see where this leg link uh, really shows itself. Um, a little bit bigger foot on Ryan, that's even more length he's going to add to his total kinetic chain of his legs that's attached to the pedal. And Ryan runs long cranks, 177.5, not many people run that long, but that's tiny compared to, it's like me running 165 millimeter cranks, truly. Uh, we'll talk about that later as well. So. Uh, I measure both these guys just a trunk length from uh, the AC joint on the shoulder, not Adam Crick, down to their trochanter, kind of an arbitrary measurement, but it's interesting. Seven inch difference in height, but Adam actually has a little bit of height difference or length in his torso that Ryan doesn't have. Pretty surprising. Um, shoulder width taken from the uh, AC joints side to side on both these guys. Adam actually has a broader chest than Ryan, which is pretty striking. When you look at total, <laughs> total arm span of these guys, Ryan has eight, what, eight and a half inches longer wingspan on the guy, but his chest is actually narrower than Adam, so that's like a monkey arm. <laughs> so, like, I broke it down into kind of percentages. Um, you know, Adam's chest is... 20, about 25% of his total arm span comes out of his, his scapula and his thoracic space. Ryan's only 20%. There's a pretty big discrepancy there. And you got to think about all the musculature that goes along with that broadness of his shoulders. Every muscle that stabilizes your scapula is going to be proportionally somewhat more developed. Well, right, right, yeah. Now, looking at femur lengths, um, <laughs> Ryan has huge femurs again, and even compared Compared to his whole leg, it was this, um, Ryan's femurs are even longer out of the entire length of his leg than Adam. So, not by much, but proportionally, he has huge femurs. And you have to think, okay, if he has long femurs, that's all the musculature that goes along with the femur is also that much longer. Quadriceps and hamstrings are some of the most dominant muscles in, in producing force on the bike. Those are longer, and they're very pretty. So, uh, you know, he's over half legs to height. Um, pretty crazy. So, the take home message, message from this is just think about, like, how much, how much muscle mass sits in the, in the center of Adam that does not sit in the center of Ryan and how much leverage Ryan has in his incredibly long appendages. Now... <laughs> Their weights aren't that much different. I guess, I mean, it's 12 pounds, but that's, I think that's a little high even for Adam, so it may even get closer at other times. And 
And so much of that lies proximally on Adam compared to Ryan, which is spread out across his arms and legs. Now, you also think about if, if Ryan has a narrower chest and longer arms, so much of his strength is going to be developed like distally out in his extremities, out in his, out in his quadriceps and hamstrings and down in his calves and out in his arms versus centrally. That has an effect on injury prevention and just force production as well. And their center of mass. Now, Brian's mass is kind of spread all over the place. Adam's is much more confined to like a tighter area. That has an effect on handling abilities. So, and think about their riding styles. Um, what do they do good at? We'll talk about that later. So next, Reed's going to look at a little bit of their, or Bart, which one do you guys think? Bart is. Bart's going to talk a little <laughs> bit about how they test it under stress. So at a